In this video, we'll guide you through the process of creating and setting up a task, laying the foundation for an organized workflow with your team. Before we begin, we recommend you follow along in your own workspace to help you become more comfortable with tasks and learn how to set them up successfully. As a quick review, tasks are the bread and butter of ClickUp. They represent concrete action items that you need to complete, and they enable important features like views, dashboards, automations, and so much more. Tasks are organized within lists, folders, and spaces. And in tasks, you can track all of your work, collaborate with your team, and get all the right context that you need to get your work done. As a best practice, Start by creating tasks from within lists. Let's create our first task together. Let's say I'm on the marketing team, and as I open up my marketing space, there are different folders that represent different initiatives. I need to create a new campaign, so let's find the new campaigns list, and we can add the task here. So let's create a task for a campaign called Make This the Summer of You. This can be done directly in the list view or you can even hit the hotkey T or the add task button at the top. Add the name of the task here and hit enter. When you create the task, it's important to include key details to provide context about it. These details are organized into fields and the first field to talk through is assignees. In ClickUp, assignees play a critical role by showing who is accountable or responsible for the task. While you can add multiple assignees to a task, it's a best practice to have just one assignee per task for clarity and simplicity. The next field is due date. Due dates are important because they help assignees and everybody on your team know when work is set to be due and you can track whether or not you're getting work done on time. The last main field to discuss here is priority. Priority helps you do exactly what it says and prioritize your work so you can see exactly what you need to get done first. Once the task is created, let's jump into it and check it out. So just click on it right here. This area is called the task view and it's where you can manage all of the details and work for your task. Depending on how you like to work, you can actually choose to view your task in different ways. So if you want to reference other work at the same time, consider viewing your tasks in sidebar mode. So you can reference other tasks and other lists while you can see the sidebar task to the right. So let's go ahead and change this back to the default. And at the top of the task, you'll see the title along with the other information that we've already set up. There's one foundational field to note here, and that is statuses. Statuses are your way of indicating the current stage of progress that this task is in, in regards to your overall process that you've defined. A simple way to look at statuses is that this is something that is going to be worked on, being worked on, or finished. The different statuses used here can be edited, typically by team leads or account admins. However, we aren't gonna be covering that today. Just be aware that statuses are one of the most important fields that you'll use in a task. And as a best practice, it's important to keep your statuses as simple and clear as possible to effectively communicate the exact stage of your task in your processes. Next, I wanna talk about the differences between assignees and then people who watch or follow your tasks. Let's say your manager needs to be in the know about the tasks and have some oversight into all of your work. You can assign them to the task here. However, that isn't the best thing to do here because if you have more than one assignee, you won't know who's actually responsible for this task. Instead, consider adding your manager as a watcher or a follower of the task so they can get the context that they need to be updated on the task without having to be assigned responsibility for the work. Select who you want to follow or watch the task here in the upper right hand corner. Whoever you select here will be informed with notifications in their inbox anytime that this task is updated, including things like status updates and comments. 
The next thing to talk about is the task description. It's a best practice to always add a task description here because it helps you describe important details, add context, and even link to important deliverables about your task. So there are a couple options here. You can choose to add a description manually with a blank page, or if you have ClickUp AI enabled, you can leverage ClickUp Brain to help you create the description. So let's write with AI here. Let's say I want to write a marketing campaign brief for a campaign titled The Summer of You, which is loosely modeled after The Summer of George from Seinfeld for all the Seinfeld fans out there. Go ahead and enter in the talking points and then select a tone of voice and creativity level and then generate the response. When the results appear, you can review it. When reviewing it, if it doesn't fit what you need, you can always choose to regenerate it and get another response. Otherwise, from here, you can choose to insert it and make changes and edits to it as you see fit. And it shows up right here within the task description. Next up, let's add more detail and context to your task. This is done by adding custom fields. Custom fields are unique data points that allow you to add additional details to your tasks beyond the standard task fields. Custom fields are typically created by team leads or account admins. However, many members can choose or enter custom field values here in the task. Custom fields help you categorize, classify, and tailor your workspace to fit your specific needs, manage your workflows, and capture important details about your work. If you want to learn more about custom fields, be sure to check out the expert learning path in ClickUp University. To update a custom field, all you need to do is click into the custom field in the details section here, and then select it or input it. Okay, great. Next, let's talk about subtasks. Subtasks break down tasks into smaller components or deliverables, and they basically act the same as tasks, just at a level deeper. For subtasks, you'll have the exact same sets of statuses and custom fields as the parent task. If you have ClickUp AI enabled, you can save time by leveraging ClickUp Brain to suggest subtasks based on all the details that you've already added to your task. From here, all you need to do is create the subtasks. Okay, our task is shaping up nicely and it feels really complete. Here's what we've got so far. It's assigned to a specific person, it's given a clear due date and task description, and there are subtasks that break up the tasks into more manageable chunks. So before we go, let's take a look at another tool inside of a task to help you supercharge your work called relationships. Think of relationships like connecting the dots between tasks. You can link your tasks or related docs and you can access them inside of your task at any time. As a best practice, create relationships with similar tasks so you can quickly reference similar work and save yourself some time. So while we're working on this new campaign, maybe there was a blog on being your best self that we can pull ideas from, or we can repurpose content for a new campaign. Normally, I'd have to spend some time searching for it, making copies of it outside of ClickUp, and I'd probably forget or lose track of where it was. So let's create a relationship for it. To create a relationship, scroll to the right of the task and click the plus sign. To create a simple relationship here, all you need to do is link a task. So let's search for the task here and link it to my new campaign. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna select it here. And now it shows up as a linked relationship within this task. Now, if I need to go find something in that task, I can click on it directly right here. So I can review it, and then I can go back to it by going to the task links section here, and then go back to my original campaign task. In this video, we demonstrated how to create a task and set it up for success. We filled out all essential fields to provide context and established relationships to streamline your workflow. Go ahead and try out the hands-on activity associated with this course and then come back for the next video.